Hey, and welcome to the live stream I'm doing today for painting papers for collage. So what I want to do is I'm going to start out by sharing with you the supplies that I'm going to be using and then we will um, get started. So I'm Robin Marie Smith and I want to welcome you. I am doing a series of live sessions and to celebrate the um, opening of my new art membership called the Robin's Nest. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo today on some of these papers that I love to create. Um, it's a great way to just kind of spend some time just if you don't really know what you want to create and then just build up your stash. So as we kind of get started, um, I just want to, hey, everybody, I see everybody's coming in now. We got Stacy and I see Brooke and Jill. Thank you guys. Just put in where you're, where you're from, where are you, and um, I will definitely be reading the chat um, for sure fully after the um, session. What I am going to ask is that once we get started, if you will put your questions in the chat and just put a cue or put the word question and then let me know what the question is because then after the demo, um, I will answer the question. So I'm kind of going to do it that way. I can't really do the demo and look at the questions at the same time. So thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm Robin Marie Smith, and I am celebrating the opening of my new art membership called The Robin's Nest. And with that, I just want to share some demos with you guys. So I'll be doing three of them. Today's the first one, and I'll be doing these um, over the next several days. Uh, the first one is painted papers for collage. And so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to show you some samples. And then I'm going to talk about the supplies that I use, and then we'll do the demo. And again, I will answer questions um, after that. So let's go ahead and dive in. I do want to make sure no one has said anything in the chat that you can't hear me. So I'm saying we're good with that. Um, if there are any problems, just pop them in there. Hopefully there won't be. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies uh, that I like to use for this. So let's take a look at the, some of the samples first. Um, the samples that I'm showing you, these are just on what um, is sketchbook paper. It, and I'll show you what that sketchbook paper is here in a second. It's very inexpensive. I love using it because it ends up being really crinkly when the papers are dry and it's super inexpensive. And I'm gonna be using mostly watercolors, some alcohol inks and some other things. And I'll show you what those, um, what those supplies are but they're just really, really messy. And you can make these as um, uh, saturated as you want. You can leave white space or not. I tend to not do very well leaving white space, but here's some samples just so you can kind of see of some of the ones that I've done. And you can kind of almost see a little bit of a theme here with the colors that I like to use. Uh, and here's, a, this is the bigger version of it. But these are just a few of some of the samples so you can kind of see what we'll be doing. Yeah, it does have this really nice sound. And when you're working on this paper, it really does feel like it's gonna just be soggy, but when it dries, it's really, really nice. So those are just some of the samples of some papers that I've made. But let's take a look at some of the supplies that I'll be using. Okay, the paper that I choose to use is by Canson. Here's the logo. And I use it in a ginormous pad. So the pad is 18 by 24 is the size. And I prefer to use the 50 pound. The 50 pound is um, thinner. There is, I believe, a 65. And there might even be a 100. But I've tried even the 65 was a little too heavy for me. And I prefer this, um, the 50 pound weight. But it's like with anything else, you need to find what works for you and what you enjoy using. And so I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna be using and then you guys surely probably have most of these supplies in your stash. So we're gonna use some watercolors. Um, this larger set is one that I've created and I've put together. And this one is by Prima Marketing. Um, this one's called Pastel Dreams. And this has a few favorites of mine in it as well. So I kind of, I use a lot of different watercolors, but it's funny how even in the sets that I put together, there's only certain colors I pick and choose that I love to use. So <laughs> I think you might find that same thing to be true as well. Okay, so I have this large stash here of pencils. Now, I'm not going to go through and name all of these, but there's a combination of charcoal and watercolor. There is some lead pencils. There's china markers in here, which are not really markers. 
And then a new favorite of mine is the, it's a Stabilo Carbo Othello. Carbo Othello. And this one is really pretty. You're going to see me definitely use this one. I love the color of that. So just got assortments of pencils that I like to use. And I know you're going to think this is weird, but we're going to be using alcohol inks. I love using alcohol inks on this paper, which is kind of unusual because really alcohol inks aren't really, I don't believe, meant to be used on paper. I've got a couple oil pastels in white and black, which I love to use. These are great to put over uh, the top when you're kind of wanting to have that color really um, sit on top, but you can't go over these because they're oil pastels. And I've got a couple here of these are Stabilo Woodies and a few colors. You might notice if you do use these, these two here look a little different than these two. Um, see how these have kind of a, a shiny um, shaft here? Many, many years ago, these were called tones. And I'm gonna try to get the camera up there. If you can see, it says tone. These were actually, the set has a lot of colors in it. I don't know if they discontinued these at some point, And then they came down with a, a smaller number and now they're called woodies. But they're the exact same thing. I just have some colors in these that I don't have in the woodies, so I use those a lot. A brush. Um, it's funny, I have a bazillion paint brushes, but I tend to gravitate to this one and there's so much paint on it, I can't even read it. I think this is a half inch. It's either an oval, I think this is an oval wash and I just, I really like this one. And then I have water, a water spray bottle because I'm gonna spray my watercolors. And then the other thing we're gonna use are, these are called infusions. And these are, they're basically a coloring stain but when you use them, they, they, they have like these crystals in them and they just look, they're really cool when you add the water to them. So you'll see me using those as well. Now in the description, I have listed a lot of, there's a link to my Amazon shop where there's a lot of these, but they're, they're not really done by color. So if there's anything specific that you're interested in, I'll be happy to answer um, towards the end. Then the other thing I have is I have some coffee water, just instant coffee and water. And then my friend Sophie introduced me to this John Neal Books. It's basically just a powder. It's an ink powder, colored powder. And I really, really fell in love with the color red, even though when it's on the paper, it doesn't look red, at least not to me. So I've got some of that uh, just mixed in a little bit of water as well. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and activate my watercolors. And basically, you just do that by spraying them with water. And I'm not gonna use all the colors, but I'm just gonna go ahead and spray all of them. It just makes it easier. So this is the starting point for building up these papers that I like to create. And I'll give you this demo. We'll show you how I actually start and how I go through the process. All right, so I've got my watercolor here and I've got my water jar. So I'm gonna have this kind of over to the side and I'm gonna dip that in there. Now, as you're working on this, this water or this paper does get very, very wet. You can use a heat tool to kind of heat it as you go, or you can work with multiple, um, multiple papers at once, and which is kind of nice. Now, this is the red that I was telling you about. It kind of looks red, but it's really cool when it dries. To me, it sort of has this like a peachy color to it, which I really, really love. Okay. So then what I come in and do is I just come in and start grabbing colors. And I'm asked a lot, how do you use so many different colors in your work, but then it doesn't look like mud? <laughs> and that's a good question because the more that you mix colors, the more you tend to risk having that muddy color. I don't know. I can't really answer it. I just kind of do it. So here is the pink. This is a opera rose let me just put a little bit more here on the outside of this so you can see it more saturated and then this color here and which by the way if you're interested in this palette I can link to a blog post where I list all of these different colors and just a tip what I like to do is I like to create a key so each of these colors has a number associated with it and then my key is somewhere else and I just look up number one and then I know what the color is. Um, I don't write the colors on here because it gets so 
messed up <laughs> as I use them that I can't really read it anyway. So I just go by the key. All right, so I'm just gonna come in here and just kind of keep adding some colors. And I generally will fill up my entire paper, but I'm just gonna, for the sake of the demo, I'm not gonna do the entire sheet, but I am gonna be working with some of these colors here. So, um, and experiment, because this is not a finished painting. This is just watercolor and paint. I say paint, I'm gonna say paint interchangeably with watercolor, but, and inks. So now let's take uh, one of our infusions and they're, these are internationally made. I can't remember the name of the company off the top of my head. Paper Artsy, I think is it. Um, but you can order them online and I think there's might be a source even in the States for that, but I can't, I can't remember 100%. So now I'm gonna spritz this and it kind of reminds me of coffee grounds in a way, but it starts to do this really cool like separation and then you can kind of move the color around a little bit. I would just experiment with the different colors and then, you know, find one that you really like. Let's see, let's do this one here. I think this is like a lemon yellow and you can even just drip water on it. You don't have to actually spray it. And then one time I grabbed it and you know how we use bottles? Like for instance, with the, uh, with the, uh, <laughs> um, the alcohol ink has a cap. And so I pulled the cap off of one of these bottles and dumped the entire thing of powder right onto what I was doing. So that was kind of messy. Now I love this one. Is this the one? Yeah, this is, are you Cerise? This is a really pretty pink and I like that one. And so I can kind of move that around a little bit as well. All right, so let's go ahead and do some alcohol ink. And again, this is kind of weird because alcohol ink isn't exactly meant to be used on paper. But I also will have my water bottle nearby or I'll have my paintbrush with some water in it. So let's just go ahead and do, and then you can almost kind of capture it right away if you move your brush. Let's do a pink. And then it dries, so. You know, it's not meant to really be used with water, but, and then I'll actually end up going over it with uh, white. The white one works really well too. Now I'm not gonna heat set this just because it's gonna take some time to do that, but I'm just gonna dab a little bit of these spots in here that's pooling, because normally I will work on this whole entire piece of paper. So let's go in and use some of our pencils now. I wanna show you this um, Carbello here, this one here. And I'm gonna dip it in water. I generally will do this with my brushes or uh, my pencils. I like to dip them into the water and then use them. So this color, it's just this beautiful, I guess it's magenta kind of color, fuchsia kind of color. Let me look and see if it has a color on there. I don't think it does. I think it just has a number. Yeah, it just has a number on it. But it's kind of got a little bit of a purple to it as well, which is really pretty. And then I have my favorites. You can tell because the pencils are kind of short. And then I'll come in and I'll just start making marks. And like I said earlier, I will often do more than one of these at a time because they do get so saturated and so wet that it works a little bit better to have multiples going at once. And then you can kind of come in here and you can even reactivate from these pencils if you want to as well. But I do use a lot of the watercolor. Now let's go in and use a couple blacks because we want to get some contrast in here. So this is a China marker. This is not water soluble. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is not water soluble. So it will not activate when I use it with, when I put this in the water or in the wet area. Now let's, I want to do some, one other thing first here. Let me find, the Stabilo, here it is. Okay, so this is the Stabilo All, which is black. And another thing I like to do when this pools is like right for instance here, there's like a pool of, of liquid here. I like to take the pencil and kind of flick it a little bit. So it kind of gives this mark that you can't really achieve by just brushing it. Kind of has like a feathery look to it, I think. 
Okay, so then I'm just going to go in, and you can use your non-dominant hand too, but whatever you're comfortable with. But I like to have a little bit of contrast in here as well. So I'll just add a little bit of black in there. And this will look really, really nice once it's dry. It's still wet, so it's a little bit, um, it just doesn't, it looks kind of mucky right now. Now I'm going to use the Stabilo, and we're going to go ahead and place that into um, some of the areas here. And I like to just do some marks, and some of it's still wet. So when you put it in there and it's still a little bit wet, it's kind of nice because this is a water soluble crayon. So we just give a little bit of contrast there. And then you can go in with some of these other ones. This is the green one. And then let's go in with a couple more pencils. So let's do some pink. Again, I'm going to dip it in my water. And sometimes I like the colors and sometimes I don't so much. And then we'll come back to some watercolors and I'll add a few more of those in. And there's not a lot of white space here in this center part, but I still have paper on either side. But that's okay. Like I said, sometimes when I'm working, I do work on multiples and then that way I can come back to it. So as these dry, yes, these are watercolor, but you can still kind of come in and still add a little bit more if there's some areas where you're like, I think I need more green or I want to blend in. And sometimes you get these colors that mix together that are very unexpected, like green and this pink really look pretty together, even though it's that really bright, bright opera, opera rose, and then the green. Let's do another powder. I want you to see another powder. And then I'm going to do a little bit of white um, on the, let me dab this because I'm not going to, not going to heat set this yet. And I want to show you one more of these infusions. Let's do the blue. I'm not a big fan of blue. It's not a color I normally use. Let's put that down here in this corner. And then let's add some of that water. And this is really pretty because it's got this blue, but it's also got this black in it. So I can actually kind of move that a little bit and add some contrast down here. And another thing I like to do before I move on to the white is I use a black as well. This is a black alcohol ink. And let me get the water. I've got water in my brush. And so I'll dab it into a spot and then I'll quickly move it. It's, I really wish you could see a lot closer up what this looks like because it kind of has like, I don't want to say texture, but it just, when it mixes with the colors that are already on the paper, it looks really cool. All right, I'm going to dab this spot right here. Again, it's got a lot of pooling right there. And then I would normally probably dry it at this point before I would keep going. I mean, this is white alcohol ink. You could use other things. You don't necessarily have to use alcohol ink. Um, you could use fluid acrylic, but I really like the alcohol ink because of the way it work, um, lands on the paper and because it's not really meant to be on the paper, so it doesn't absorb into it the same. And it figures now I can't get this one open. Let's try another brand. I have tried multiple brands of the alcohol inks and I have found there is a difference between the brands. This is not the Ranger. I don't think I like it quite as much, but all right. It's kind of hard to see that. You'll see it more once it's dry, but that's kind of what I'm going for here. All right, now, this definitely has to be dried, but I want you to get the idea of just kind of how I start this process. Now I'm gonna lift this up. Again, it's dry, so it's very shiny. But here is kind of where, we're, where we've started. And I didn't do all the way around the outside. I always really kind of work from the outside. As I showed you earlier, let me pull this one here. You can see when it's dry, kind of got crazy with the green. Remember when I said earlier that I, when I went to use one of these, I twisted the cap off instead of using the little hole in the top? and I just poof, right onto the paper because I was thinking alcohol ink and it wasn't. That's why that green spot's there. But you can see how I've really gone all the way around to the outside of the edges of the paper. And here, alcohol ink, these little blue 
um, dribbles there. That's also alcohol ink. It just looks so different because it absorbs into the paper and it doesn't move. Even when you add water back to it, once it's dry, it's not gonna move. So that's one of the reasons why I really like using it. Okay, so this is totally gonna have to dry um, to really look the way it, I want it to look. And again, if you're using this kind of paper, it's gonna be very, very wet and feel like it's going to fall apart, <laughs> but it won't. It just let it dry and then it will be super crinkly. And I also use this paper when I make my coffee dye paper as well. And I've tried a ton of papers and there's many out there that are really nice, but this one is the one I keep coming back to that is one of my favorites. So this is kind of a starting point. I will also come in after it's dry, add more layers. I'll actually do some stamping into this black and white, add more to it and kind of build build these up. But this is the base layer and I think this looks great even on its own. And again, I would have gone all the way around and if you even go a little bit lighter, you can cut these papers up and then use them um, as your journal pages. Let me show you an example. This one has some paint, like here's, here's part of one of the pages that was painted. And you can see these just make nice little base papers to start with. Let me see if I've got well here even. You can, and also you don't have to use sketchbook paper. You can use book pages. You can use just about anything, but there's a few. Oh, here's another one. See, this one's just a page in this journal that I'm gonna get started on. So even though it's got a lot of ink on it, it's still a great starter for working in a journal. So, okay, let's come back to, um, Let's go here. Okay, so I wanna see if there's any questions um, that I can answer. It's so weird, because I'm, no I'm normally used to doing this on Zoom where I can see everybody and talk to everybody. Um, what I'd like to do is actually sit here and dry this, but then I can't talk to you, so <laughs> I want you to see it dry. Oh, let me see here. I'm gonna run through and see what questions you have. Okay, um, Stacy says, I was just about to order infusions from Joggles. I, that's the other company I think that I remember seeing carried it. Which colors do you recommend? There are so many. Okay, so there are. And I, again, I don't know what your favorite colors are, but that one I used a second ago, which was the RU, um, and actually I can put this in the description as well. So after the live it'll process and then i'll put this in there um it's ru cerise it's c-e-r-i-s-e -E, and it's that really pretty pink bright pink i also like the lemon cello which is kind of a little bit of a yellow color and then i didn't use it today but the sage is a really pretty one too the sage um they i don't know if it's on their website or if you go to paper artsy but they do have um some really nice uh, photographs of what it looks like with the, having been added the water added to it so you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of what it looks like um, so maybe those are my three favorite colors all right um, okay Stacy says yes would love to know I will put the link in the um, when the replay is up I have a blog post that has um, all of those colors that are shown in my big set that I used every color and I believe most of them are Daniel Smith there might be a couple that are not but um, but I will put the link to that in the description so you can take a look at that as well I get asked about that a lot and what I did was I just bought a case and then I bought let me show you the um, let me show you here you can see these little pots or pans or whatever and I also write the color on the back, but this one's an, a newer one, but the ones that are in the set, um, the way that I do them is I put a number on the, the number on the side of these with a Sharpie, because then you, um, you know which pot goes, I say pot, the little, whatever those are called, um, they go with that number, so you don't ever get them mixed up, so. Um, okay, Tammy, natural chocolate, I think they are sprinkle watercolors, and let me look, I'm looking for questions here. Um, oh yes, the Carbothellos, these are amazing, these were gifted to me by a friend, and they're so bright, and they come in sets, I haven't actually ordered any of the sets yet, I just have this one right now, but they are really beautiful. I can't wait to get some more. Okay, my favorite brands of alcohol ink, and I did mention this in the demo, are the uh, Ranger. 
Um, I have tried those off brands. In fact, the one I just used in the white is called Picasso. Picasso. I just don't think that they have the, um, the, the pigments just don't seem as bright. And when I'm using them, they just, they just didn't flow very well. And so I compared those to the, um, the Rangers and they're more expensive, but I think they're, they're just better. They're a better brand. Okay. The powders again are called infusions and they're colored stains infusions. And I'll, I'll put the link to those in the description once we wrap up as well. Um, the paper. Okay. No problem. No problem. Let me find my little sample here real quick. Okay. So the paper is Canson is the brand and I buy it in this huge pad. It's sketchbook paper and I like the 50 pound. The 50 pound is very light and I get it in the 18 by 24 because then I can just cut it to the sizes that I need. And this is really the paper that I put on my work table um, as I'm, you know, creating. So it's perfect because it not only does it catch all the extra stuff that's left over, but then um, I'm able to reuse it, but it's one of my favorites. So, all right. All right, I answered the paper is Canson recycled. Yes, that's correct. Thanks, Brooke, for popping that in there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Everything scrapbook and stamps carries. Okay. The infusions. Okay. I, I know. Thanks, Jill. I am pretty sure there's some others that carry them. Um, can you put your Amazon link in the chat? Yes, I can do that. Um, nope. No, sorry. If there's a question, I'm happy to answer it. Okay. Actually, no, I, I'm not using gesso before. Um, you could, the result would be very different. Um, you, if, if I were going to do it, I would put the gesso and make sure it was dry before I added anything. But, you know, gesso is a primer. It's, it's going to have tooth or grit to it. And it's going to be, um, uh, it's just going to look different. It's going to absorb differently than if you just use the paper as it is. Um, so I would say, go ahead and try it out. But um, it would it would definitely be different than um, using just the paper as it is. So, all right, I'm looking to see if there's more questions. And somebody did ask me about the the information for yes. And as I mentioned, I do go in and do more layering um, after this is dry and I like to work, like I said, with multiples so that I do end up with, um, uh, some are dry, some are not. And then I'm able to kind of, you know, work them out where they're not all, I'm not, they're not all wet and I can use them. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pop the link in here for, this is for the session we're doing right now. I believe that's the link to most of the supplies because the infusions are not available on Amazon, at least not the last time I looked. So, um, do you press the paper after to make it smooth? No, I don't. <laughs> I actually really like it wrinkly. However, um, it does, I mean, it depends. Like if I use a ton of mediums in there, it does get really crinkly. Um, but I like it that way. Um, it's, I just, I prefer it. So no, I do not, um, I do not mash it, I think is what you asked me. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Do you, oh, okay. The Canson paper shows a green cover. Okay. Yes. Um, I believe it's the same thing though, because the old pads I ordered were green and this one came orange. However, it comes in a spiral, um, a spiral bound, and then it comes with the adhesive. The orange one, I think it, and I may be wrong, but mine comes, I don't like the one with the the ring because then I have to tear it out and that's really stupid, but I just like the one I can just grab it and go. So that might be the difference, but I don't know that that for sure is the reason, but yes, there is, there is just say, make sure it has 50 pound, um, recycled sketch. Uh, yeah. And then you should be good. Um, what was the purple pen that you used? Oh, okay. That must've been, let me find it here really quick. I think that was the yeah, let me go back so you can see it. Okay, so I think this was the one you were referring to, the Carbo Thello. It's C-A-R-B-O-T-H-E-L-L-O, -L -L -O, Carbo Thello. Comes in a lot of different colors, um, and I think they have them in sets. Uh, really, really 
really nice, um, very pigmented. And when you add that water to it, it's really beautiful. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you guys. Y'all are so sweet. Um, okay. Yes. The Robin's nest. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Um, okay. Jill. Yes. Actually you can use the pencil dry or I like to dip it in water and use it or even add your brush with water afterward. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're welcome, Carol. Okay. I'm, I just want to talk a little bit about the Robin's nest. I know that I see names in here. I know several of you guys are in it already. It's my new passion project. Um, Basically, I was just craving creativity again and community again after a long time of teaching artists how to do technology in their business. And so I really wanted to, um, to change that and, and create a community where we can do much like this only on Zoom where we just hang out and I'm going to be teaching lessons and doing different things in it. Um, it's basically a, a, a community. It's a monthly membership community for um, creatives who want something kind of slower paced. It's not, um, it's not stressful. I don't want it to be stressful. I want it to be something that can be very, um, just like I said, easygoing. Um, so let me go in just a little bit and give you some of the, you know, cause there's always like, well, what's in there? Okay. Well, there's a lot of things in there right now. So we're going to have these monthly art nest minis. Basically, these are live sessions where we get together and we just play and they'll be recorded. So if you can't make the time and I'm working right now to try to add where I can have more times, but I know it's hard to get everyone in and make it good for everybody. So there will be recordings. Now, probably one of the biggest bonuses is that my art courses, and I believe there's 10, um, all of my art courses, the ones that are only me teaching, not a collaborative, are in there. Um, there's 10 in there now, and one of those classes that's in there now isn't even available yet on my website. So basically, you have access to my courses. Um, so if you decide, hey, I've done the lesson for the month, and I would really like to do something else, you can pick from those classes. And you'll have access to those for as long as you're a member of the membership. So, um, and then, oh, I got those confused. There's the live live sessions, and then there's a, a monthly lesson that I'll do on a topic that we'll cover um, every month, something different. You also have VIP shop access. So when I have things in my shop, you members will get first first access before anybody else will. I'll be doing monthly member spotlights. We've got a warm community, which is really something that's important to me and more. Um, and right now it's founding member pricing at $19 a month before the doors close next week on the, t on the 30th. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has about that. You can just reach out to me. And I know already there's um, several in here that I know are already in it. So I really appreciate that. I'm so excited to be able to, really what I want is to bring everybody in here and just hang out with me. You know, creating can be lonely and we sometimes we're just all by ourselves and I miss that connection and I just really want to, you know, even if it's just creating something, not even something major, like, right, just painting paper, it's so much more fun to do that with others. And so this is really um, after last year, I went to a retreat, I taught at Sacred Makers and I really realized then how much I missed this, missed this whole community and creating more. And I just told my husband, I said, I just want to make stuff and have people join me. Like, I just want that back again. So that was sort of the, uh, the background or the reasoning behind actually setting this up. So I'm really excited about it and I can't wait. So we got two more lives that are just for anybody who wants to attend. And the next one is going to be on Monday. And then the last one is on Wednesday and they're both at 2 p.m. Eastern time and the topics are just, I, one of them's doing black and white papers and then we're going to work in our journals. So I hope you'll join me for those. So, um, yes, Carol, they will be on Zoom. Um, I want everyone, now, you don't have to be on camera. Don't even have to say anything if you just want to show up. Um, but I want that community aspect. Like right now, this is awesome, but I can't see you guys. <laughs> and I'd rather see you guys than just look at a chat. So yes, so Carol, they will be done by Zoom. Um, oh, Tammy, that's hilarious. See, that was like way back when. Yeah, I had the, the Paper Bag Studios was my stamp company. I've had a lot of iterations in my, my creative journey over the years. So 
thank you, um, Brooke. I'm really excited that you're you're here as well. Thank you guys for showing up today. I really appreciate it. And if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer um, about the membership or any of the supplies that I used. Um, you know, I probably should put the link in the chat. <laughs> I had everything planned and then it was like, oh, wait a minute. I should probably put that in here, right? All right, let me do that really quick here. Well, I got Kat to be able to spell my name, right? Anyway, so I... Uh, I really like the name too. And let me tell you, this was really funny because the story behind the Robin's Nest, obviously, because my name is Robin Marie. It's long, but I, um, I, I, I was trying to brainstorm different ideas and my husband is the one that came up with the name. It was actually during the Christmas holiday. Um, we had some friends here and we were all driving over to the beach and he goes, how about the Robin's Nest? And we were all like, yeah, that's kind of cool. We like that. And so anyway, he gets the credit for that. So yes, Marie, the, uh, yes, yes, there will be a replay on this and it takes a little while for um, YouTube to process it. Um, but there will be a replay up. So you'll be able to take a look and uh, see everything. And then I did promise you guys some links added to the, the description. So you can just tune back into that and those will be there waiting for you. So all right. Anything else? Anybody have any other questions? I'm happy to answer regarding the supplies. Um, I want to make sure I did promise you the, um, the watercolor. The, the, basically, it's a swatch with all my colors and numbers. That's on a blog post, and so you can just kind of tune into that and, and see what I've got. And then um, I think there was the, the infusions. Yeah, because those are those are not on Amazon. So was there anything else? All right. Anybody have any other questions? Oh, inside the membership, Stacy. they right now I have them scheduled for Saturday um, at 2 p.m. Eastern. However, I am asking the members as they're coming in, tell me where you live. Tell me what your schedule is. I know I can't accommodate everyone, um, but I would like to um, add in some more um, days and times that would be different. So like uh, I'm in Eastern time. So, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning here might be great for people, not necessarily West coast folks, but some others. And so I'm going to try to work that in. It's just going to take a little time for me to get a grasp of where everybody is. And it may just be that we just change it up. And so that way, you know, hopefully, and you'll know ahead, there's a schedule in the membership. So you know exactly when they're coming up and you know, what day and what time. So you'll, you'll know exactly what's coming up and then I'll add to it as we go. Yes, Stacy, the live sessions. That's correct. Um, will the lives all be before the early bird? No, we kick everything off in October, uh, Marie. There is a celebration kickoff party on October 7. For all the members, we're going to do giveaways. You don't even have to be present to win. And then the first live of us just hanging out together and creating and talking is the 14th of October. But I am working to add another one in. I am going to be out of town for about a week or so in October. So I'm just trying to figure out where to fit that in. So, but yeah, so those will be, we're kind there is, there is, um, all the art classes are in there, but we have a project that we're starting with. It's a journal with stitching and fabric. That is like the first course that's in there for October, but you get access to it now as soon as you sign up. And so you can kind of take your time. You'll have plenty of time to get through it and create it. And of course, you just do what you want. If you don't like it, there was a lady that joined said, I don't want to stitch. And so she's like, I'm going to do something else. And I'm like, that's great. You don't have to do everything that's in there. Um, so I think that answered your question. Um, okay, Spider-Man fan. I agree. Yes, I love that. Hey, Emily. Emily's in as well. Thank you, Emily. Um, I know I recognize so many names here that have been in my circle for a very, very long time. Oh, Okay, Sam Jackson from Vancouver. You just popped in. We're almost done. Um, we're just answering some questions. I will have a replay so that you'll be able to catch everything that we did and you'll be able to watch it um, later. Um, thank you, Jill. I am too. I'm really excited about this. So um, yeah, it's just, I'm really, I love uh, that community aspect you know and I was thinking about this before because I don't know of those of you that are here who were around when myself and some other artists started the documented life project which was 2014 that's been almost 10 years and 
you know, that community that we were building at the time was really cool. And I know things change over the years and things are different, but I really want to try to capture some of that again. And, you know, just, just so lonely creating by ourselves. So yes. Okay. Nancy was around Jill. Yeah. See, yeah, it, it was, it was amazing. We had no clue that it was going to be what it was. And then for the, for y'all that maybe are going, what is that? Um, it was a year long project. Every week we had a, um, a prompt and we worked in like a planner journal thing. I have, um, that available on my website, only my take on the theme, on the project. Like every week it's just my take on it, but there were five of us doing it. So you had like five different versions of it and stuff. So, um, I'd like to see about maybe planning something in the new year that might be something, you know, that we can kind of do along together, but I don't know. I got all kinds of ideas, but I don't want to fire hose you guys. So, <laughs> okay. Rita says, I've taken classes from you for years. I was part of the DLP. Yep. Excited to join. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Um, Connie. Hey, Connie. It's good to see you here. Yeah. If you have any questions, just you know, after you've kind of reviewed everything, just let me know. I'm happy to answer. Um, thank you, Stacy. Uh, Nancy, still my favorite journaling. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's one, I think one of the things we kind of bounce back and forth, you know, from different things that we enjoy doing, but I always come back to journaling. I just love it. So we'll be doing a bit of that in our membership as well. So, okay. We are 45 in and I'm going to wrap things up. If there's no more questions, um, I'm going to say sayonara. Um, I have some friends in town and there's a really important football game coming on at 3.30. So I have to eat lunch and get my game day part, game day face on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, just reach out and let me know when you get to the link and you're looking at the membership, you can just click over and I will be happy to answer any questions. Again, this replay will be live. So, uh, well, not live, but you know, it'll be on YouTube and then you guys can watch it later. So, and if just clarification, if you're tuning in, and it's like, I don't know, December, uh, the membership will open up again, but right now it's open till September 30th and then the doors will open later. So, all right. Hey, Becky, I recognize your name. Yes. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was my first live, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm, I was nervous, very nervous, but it's so much fun. I think the only drawback is I can't really see you guys and I'm not really hearing you. So but I do, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So, and thank you, Brooke. She was cheering me on this morning and giving me support and I appreciate it very much. So I did, I did, I did it. All right. Thank you everybody so much. <laughs> Thanks, Brooke. All right. I'm tuning out now, guys. So again, any questions, you just reach out and let me know. I am happy to help. Bye.